Hello. Welcome to this week's upload. We are currently strolling through a bit of alley pally somewhere that I've never been to before. And we're on our way to the farmer's market, which we've known about since we moved in about five years ago. So Got there eventually. the first time we've been. It's a possibility that we're gonna get very wet because it might rain a lot, but at the moment it's just a bit muggy. Nice day out for you, all of that. Yeah, so Jeff's having a fun time sniffing everything. That's per. Yeah, I'm talking about you. So we're gonna see if we can find something for dinner. Neither of us have, well, I've certainly never been to a farmer's market, so I don't really know what to expect. I don't either. No. I'm expecting to be a bit disappointed, I think, but. <laughs> Probably. Well, uh, past but we'll show you when we get there. Chicken legs out of it. These go going. Camera's fucked up from the shower. <laughs> this is not the floor to do that on me. Uh, no, Jeff, off, off, off. Here he goes, off. Two bees. Jeff, off. You done? You finished? You finished? Finished. You finished. Off. Finished. Oh dear, he's still not going. He's still going. Still got the zoomies on. Um. 
Yeah, so you can see it's been it's been raining. Uh, quite a bit. Oof. Yeah, it's a lovely day. Jeff, don't do that on the sofa. Off. Off. Where's Pete? Where's Pete? Um but yeah, now it's raining, so he's just had to have a shower because he was really grubby from all the rain and the dirt and this, that and the other. Um so yeah, give me a second and I'll go and get our purchases so that I can show you what we got for from the farmer's market. Jeff, can you not do that in the safe, please? Jeff, off, off, off. Oh, off you get, off you get. Does anyone else's dog do this when they're really wet, that they have to run incessantly around, oh, for God's sake, run in circles? Or is it just him? Right. As I was saying, give me a second and I'll go get our farmer's market purchases. And I'll show you what we got. Obviously you saw Pete's huge scotch egg, which he says, what did you say? It's good. Quite pretty. It was a... Uh... Yeah, it's a good taste in it. But it was a... Uh... Never had a scotch egg that big before. It was uh... one of the better ones I've had. Not that I'm a scotch egg. Come on, sir. <laughs> there we go. For dinner tonight, we have the wild deer pie. Apparently it's award winning um, from Melton Mowbray, which is obviously a place I know. Well, he said every one of his pies was award winning. Well, yeah, Melton Mowbray pork award pies are right. Yeah, um, apparently uh, Tony Carter, you know, goes to get his deers and he puts them in a red wine sauce. So that's our, that's our pie in a, you know, what's it? Short crust butter pastry. Made with locally milled flour, but not locally to us because this is from the Peak District. So locally to the Peak District. So that's dinner. We have oh, got the wrong hands. Some cherry tomato pesto that we probably use next week on some gnocchi. That was tasty. She said to do it with roasted peppers, which I think sounds quite nice. But we'll see what Pete whips up for me for that. And lastly, I'm not going to get these out of the bag, but we got some brownies, which were Christie's. <laughs> there we go. Which were two for something. Two for three fifty. Um, but he chucked in a third one because he was nice, and it was raining, and he probably wouldn't have sold anything else. So. They, they were our purchases, which for us is quite a lot. We never buy anything from these kind of markets. Um, we'll see what they taste like to whether we'd go back again. Lots of free samples. Yeah, we ate tons of free samples. Cause... Will you get off the sofa and do that? Go on. Yeah, lots of free samples, ate lots of things. They had a chimney cake stand, which was I was quite fond of. Um, Probably would have got that for pudding if, you know, we, we'd eaten there because they're better fresh. We had one in Krakow, which was very tasty. I think that's all I've got to say about the market. Nice walk, except for the rain. I do like Ali Pali or Alexandra Palace if you're not from London and know the lingo. Well, we're definitely back up there at the end of December for a play, but we might end up going before that. Jeff's still trying to dry himself, which is why you keep hearing all those random noises from him. So I think I mentioned it before that a couple of my colleagues are leaving work, so um, they're both retiring Ugh, really happily on the same same time, but that's besides the point. So I bought them a little present, something very small, just from me and a card that I need to write now, because I need to give that to them this week. Work in general will do a big collection and a card from everyone, so this is why this is such a small thing just from me. This is what I've got to do now. Right, bought a little gift bag for each. So let's just take the price off that. Upsettingly, Card Factory only had this one with all the glitter over it, and although it looks pretty, it's not very good for the environment. I'm now I'm not sure if it's going to be big enough for everything that I've bought. Basically, they've got the same thing. Jeff, can you leave that, please? Because um, it was easier that way. So. I've printed these, uh, they're like my little concoction, so I've, I've made them a starting retirement kit 
as a bit of a joke, really. So the first thing is mints. So we've got some polos, um, because happy retirement, obviously. So we'll put two packets of polos on there. Penny, I need to go get my purse and a piece of paper. Right, so the second thing is a penny, which I've just stuck on a piece of paper just so it doesn't get lost. And that's to help their retirement fund. Then I've bought them both a notebook. They're the sort of bendy ones. I like the style, but I hate the colour. It's the only colour they had. So I've got them a notebook each so that they can plan their future adventures. And I'm just going to put the penny and printed out the thing for my YouTube channel, just in case they miss my face. Um, so I'm going to put those two things in the notebook. It doesn't work, of course. Now the penny can just go loose. So next is a tea bag uh, each because they're now on a permanent break and in our office we eat a lot of biscuits and they both eat a lot of biscuits so you can't have a tea break without a packet of biscuits and that goes in there as well a packet of post-its because they can't steal stationery from work anymore um, down the card from my youtube channel marbles hoping I can just undo the net of this rather than rip it because I want to reuse it right how many have we got oh losing my marbles <laughs> so the marbles are to replace the ones that they've lost at work one of them in particular that's leaving always jokes about how dangerous she'd be if she had a brain so I know she'll find this amusing. I mean they both will but her in particular. And then lastly you know it's actually a celebration. I've got them both a little bottle of Prosecco. And this is the thing that I don't know whether it's going to fit. So. Oh just about but it comes out the top so Those. I've got to try and look at how I'm going to transport these to work. Um, and then I'm just going to fold that over. Put that on top. So it's kind of silly. Most of the thing, well, pretty much everything other than the marbles are kind of useful or edible. Which is, nothing should really go to waste, again, other than the marbles, but that was too funny for me to leave out. Just got to write the cards which I actually prepared the wording for in advance because there are particular things that I want to say and I don't know if I just go straight into it I'll probably forget half of it um, so instead of you know retirement cards or sorry you're leaving which all felt a bit final and a bit yeah didn't like that um, I'm hoping I get on very well with the two ladies so I'm hoping that I'll see them again soon so I've just got them some floral thank you cards because they've made my working life for the past two years more enjoyable maybe I'm right in that
dinner. Let's try this uh, supposedly award-winning pie. So it's venison and red wine. I'm not sure I got any venison in that bite, but the sauce is nice. A good bit of venison there. And the pastry was good. That's good. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with that now. So I've just watched the last episode of Peaky Blinders, which I know I've talked about quite a bit. And is this is the fourth series? Well, anyway, there's been a few series before it. And I have to say, this has probably been my least favourite. It feels very much like a filler series. Like it's all building up to the next series rather than being good in its own right, I guess. Spoilers. I'm glad to see that Tom Hardy is back because his character Alfie Solomons is great. And that, that was good. And I enjoyed that bit. But I don't know, it just didn't keep me gripped as it normally does. I'm sure they're doing more series of it, particularly as they've just left that on a big cliffhanger. But, yeah, no, I wasn't as keen, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to it. I did see the uh, trailer for His Dark Materials and that looks really good. They look like they've done that well. So looking forward to that one coming. It does say coming soon at the moment, so I guess that's in a few weeks' time. Oh, sorry, it's time for bed. I'm actually going to the theatre tomorrow, so I'm going to take you along to that. We always have like the bird's nest. What? Like little cheep cheep cheep? Just sitting on top? Yes, there's loads of cheap cheap cheap. So, welcome to a very grey London Me and Adam are sat in a pub. We've just had dinner. And, we're going to be heading to the Woodpitch Theatre Lyric Theatre. We're in the Lyric Pub. Are we in the Lyric Pub? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we're in the Lyric Pub and we're going to go to the Lyric Theatre. You're looking, the sun's there. Yeah. Uh, inside. Hang on. Yeah. Do that in a minute. Um, Sorry. Um, so we're going to go and see Showstoppers, which is the improvised musical. And... Uh, I'm here. Um, someone asked me what it was today. Yeah. Um, well, it's a musical that's improvised. <laughs> yeah, it's whose line is it anyway, but we're singing. Yeah. Last time we saw it, uh, it was a, film, uh, a musical about Irish sugar plantation owners called Sweet Potatoes. See, I remember it very well. I don't remember the songs, but you know, I don't always remember the song. And then there was the woman that had the uh, baby birth song. I don't remember it. There's a whole song of her giving birth. To, okay. I can't remember what musical style it was. I remember there was a song type one, and like a Chim Chimney type one. Yeah, it was good. No big dance number though. That's hard to improvise. No, you can't improvise everyone forming a swastika on the floor and dancing around like that. What's the film where they do that? No, much more stupid. It's been time for Hitler, the producers. Every time I think of big stage dancing now, I just picture the producers, I'm sorry. I've never seen it. Yeah. It's very grey and wet outside, so you probably won't feel any grey afterwards, but I'll either give you a review on the trip or tomorrow when I'm back home work. Oh, I won't give a review. <laughs> Unless I do get my camera out and then you might do it. Right. Fair enough. Go on, let me show the, show the sign. Look, it's going to be really cool. Oh, odd. I'm going to go out the window. <laughs> Coward. Smooth, eh?
kick you out for filming, you know. So I'm in my dressing gown again. Sorry. I said to you yesterday that I would let you know about showstoppers today and I nearly forgot, I have to admit. So here I am, just about to go to bed and telling you about the musical I saw yesterday. If you don't know or I didn't tell you or whatever yesterday, uh, showstoppers is a group of people and they do an improvised musical. So there are six main people who are all the characters in the musical. There's three people in a band and then there's one guy who acts like the director, I guess. And it's his job to interact with the audience and get all the ideas. So the audience come up with the location, the name, and then they give about four styles of musical that they want a song from. So the one I saw yesterday was set in the space station. It was called Double Double Hubble Trouble, I think, something like that. And it had songs in the styling of Chicago, Nine to Five, Pirates of Penzance, and another one, Forbidden Planet. Unfortunately, two of those musicals I haven't seen, so that doesn't help me when it comes to knowing what the style of music is supposed to be like. And then, you know, hijinks and shoe. So this is very clever the way they do it and how quickly they come up with things. Uh, we were, as an audience, asked to name some objects that would be on the space station. And someone said a llama. So, yep. As you can imagine, they had... There was a bloke pretending to be a llama, while two other blokes sang a song in the style of Pirates of Penzance, which turns out to be, you know, like Dr. Doolittle and stuff, where it's just a lot, a lot of words very, very quickly. Um, about why llamas are on the space station. The reason they came up with is because they have more than one stomach, so, you know, it takes longer for them to be sick. I mean, very quick thinking, if you think about that. Even if it is a bit odd. It's me and Adam have been to one of these shows before, and that one was about a sugar plantation in Ireland. Again, audience participation makes it a bit odd. And I think that one was probably better. I can't say why, though. Both were very funny. But I think the island one just takes the biscuit a little bit. I think it's slightly better. And that might be because there was a really tall man who my brother said looked like a corpse, which I thought was a bit harsh. And he made it just that little bit too slow. It took his brain just that little bit too long to come up with stuff and he also made the story take some turn that I think the whole audience didn't really want it to go but they went with it and they made the best out of it but it was very enjoyable I'd definitely go again because it's obviously a different musical every time you go and see it the cynic in me wonders whether the people are planted because those songs are far too formed for an improv but like that can't be the case I just think they're very quick, like their brains are very quick and obviously they know how songs work and how musical theatre works and all of that and they must do so much work to get themselves up to speed like that. There's one woman who was in both shows and in both shows she was hilarious. She didn't get quite as big a part in this, she played some Russian pilot called Vlad she was very funny and she had to come up with two songs off the cuff and they were just brilliant about going into the woods and walking in the snow um i guess she had to be there for that but thoroughly enjoyable definitely would go and see it again but it obviously depends on the the audience participation to where it's set and the songs and things like that so that's my review on it i guess the other thing, because I think it's in this vlog that I did it, I gave those retirement presents to my colleagues today and they were very touched. They thought it was very thoughtful and very funny and those essays I wrote in the car did make them, you know, well up a little bit. So I guess that's what you want from a leaving present. And they bought us a toaster for the office, which I'm strangely excited about. 
that opens a whole world of lunches that I didn't have before. And on that note, I'm going to end this vlog. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day whenever you're watching it, or evening, or, you know, wonderful time. And thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have any views or opinions on what you want me to do in the future, please leave me a comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!